Welcome everyone, I'm Spiro, thanks for tuning in. Yesterday I sent a formal invitation to the Gates Foundation and invited Bill Gates to be my guest for an interview. That request was quickly denied due to scheduling constraints. I did reply back and inform them that I'd be more than happy to tailor my schedule for the foreseeable future to meet Bill's schedule. I haven't heard back yet, I'm not going to hold my breath. but. Bill Gates recently did give an interview to the Rothschild partially owned economist. And in this interview, Bill Gates was asked how he views the US handled the response to the outbreak. And his reply was, aside from the high risk money that the US ponied up for the vaccine research and development, he thinks that the US is doing a poor job overall. And he directly blamed the poor, the poor response on lack of preparation, but also freedom. Yes, Bill Gates blamed our freedom for the spread of the virus. Now let's turn to the US because it's the country, you know, it's the world's biggest economy, it's the preeminent public health country in the world, it's got the world's best epidemiologists. I mean, why has it done so badly? Well, we believe in freedom, uh, individual freedom. We optimize for individual rights. Bill Gates then went on to praise China and their authoritarian response and said that despite the fact that people's rights were violated, China's response was really amazing. What about China, about which there's obviously a lot of debate? Should we, should we blame China for you know, not, not being fessing up early enough or should we praise them for the degree to which they got it under control internally? Well, the country that's where the a uh, new virus shows up first has the toughest job because they have no warning at all. And so it's likely to get out in fairly big numbers. They clearly made mistakes. There were warning signs, people uh, talking about it. They didn't uh, go after it in those, you know, the month of December and even parts of January. Uh, they. In retrospect, they could have rung the alarm bell uh, more loudly than they did. After that, although in, in their typical, fairly authoritarian way, they did a very good job of suppressing the, the virus. Uh, you know, there may have been a lot of individual rights that were violated there, but the overall macro effect that they achieved uh, is, is, you know, kind of, um, kind of amazing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is right out of the 2010 Rockefeller Lockstep document, a world of tighter top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership with limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. The United States' initial policy of strongly discouraging citizens from flying proved deadly in its leniency, accelerating the spread of the virus not just within the U.S. but across borders. However, a few countries did better, China in particular. The Chinese government's quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of borders, saved millions of lives, stopping the spread of the virus earlier than in other countries and enabling a swifter post-pandemic recovery. China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect citizens from risk and exposure. During the pandemic, national leaders around the world flexed their authority and imposed airtight rules and restrictions, from mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at entries to communal spaces like train stations and supermarkets. Even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. At first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. Citizens willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy to more paternalistic states in exchange for greater safety and stability. Citizens were more tolerant and even eager for top-down direction and oversight, and national leaders had more latitude to impose order in ways they saw fit. In developed countries, this heightened oversight took many forms, including biometric IDs for all citizens. Again, this is a Rockefeller Foundation document from 2010, and it seems that it's playing out today, 10 years later, as we are witnessing more government authoritarianism than ever before in our lifetimes and possibly ever before in history. Now, right, this is right down to the biometric IDs, which are rolling out right now, and we're going to get into more here in a bit. But first, 
Recently, Australia's Prime Minister stated that the coming COVID vaccine would be mandatory for every Australian except for those who had a medical exemption and good luck getting one of those. Now, this is not good. Uh, it has been the plan all along and it appears that Australia is the testing ground for this approach. Fortunately, this announcement was met with fierce blowback from the people, rejecting the notion of compulsory vaccination. In fact, the resistance was so strong that the Prime Minister quickly walked back his statements and said that the vaccine would not be mandatory, but instead they would strongly encourage people to be vaccinated. Australia's Prime Minister has backed away from a suggestion that a coronavirus vaccine should be mandatory. After a backlash, Scott Morrison now says people will be encouraged to get themselves vaccinated. He says there will also be measures put in place to secure a high rate of immunization. Australia has secured a vaccine deal that it plans to roll out cost-free to citizens. And by strongly encourage, he means coercion. People will essentially be blackmailed or held ransom if they refuse, and their ability to participate in society will greatly be reduced. Now, he didn't come out and say those last parts. This is my interpretation of this, because this should not be viewed um, as a victory. Uh, you know, this is essentially a, a negotiation process. They start here and they say, mandatory vaccines. And you're like, hell no, we're not taking it. And then they're like, okay, well then, you know, we're going to limit your ability to participate in society if you don't take it. So that's like the common ground. So it's like, oh, well, uh, you know, no, that is BS. Okay. Uh, that is not a victory. People need to continue to push back. Now, the Australian Prime Minister stated, quote, we cannot hold someone down and make them take it, end quote. But... Parents can lose access to government payments uh, at, like the family tax benefit and the child care subsidies if their children do not meet the immunization requirements. So we will be seeking uh, its most widespread application as we do with all important vaccines. But Paul, you might want to talk about how those practices are followed and we'll be doing that of course in partnership with states and territories. Um, thank you, PM. So, of course, the, the first will be a, a, a voluntary uh, call for people, and I'm sure there will be uh, long queues, um, socially distanced, of course, uh, for this vaccine. It will be incredibly welcomed by many. It will be the absolute ticket to, to get back to some sort of uh, normal society and, and the things that we all love and enjoy. So I think there will be a very strong take-up of the, this vaccine. Of course there will be some uh, that for, for medical reasons, as the PM has said, uh, will, will not be able, may not be able to, to take the vaccine, but um, there will be very strong uh, campaigns to, to encourage people. Uh, and, and we've had experience before of, of, of linking uh, vaccination with, with other programs, and th all of those things will be looked at over time. But now, I'm sure there will be several other forms of punishment for Australians and people around the world who refuse to take the vaccine. Now, Australia also granted itself the authority to remove children from their families under its COVID-19 Emergency Response Act to ensure compliance with emergency protocols. Businesses in Australia are also looking to enforce no jab, no job. So if you don't take the shot, you won't have an income. You cannot support your family. You can't pay your bills. You can't keep a roof over the head. You can't put food on the table. Do you see where this is going? Okay, it's not a victory that he walked back the mandatory vaccines. Okay, now in the US, the CDC promoted training material on its website saying that children may be removed from parents in a quarantine situation. It's essentially the same thing that they're rolling out in Australia and we're seeing roll out all over the world. Now, right now in the US, we're also seeing new vaccine mandates for students across the country, even those who do not attend school in person, but attend online. And if your child misses classes, online classes at this point, teachers have been reporting the parents to the police. Now, we are seeing a full court press right now globally to accept COVID-1984, to obey and to roll up your sleeve. We are seeing more and more rhetoric that the state has the authority to jail you or to impose fines on you if you refuse to take this experimental vaccine. In addition to restricting your ability to having a job, going to sporting events, going to restaurants, going to a store to buy food, to receive government assistance, to go to school, work, travel, you name it. Okay, they're going to hold this against you. They're going to try to force you to willingly submit. This is blackmail. This is holding you hostage. 
This is tyranny, okay? And it's being justified by this manufactured crisis. And for generations, the system has been incrementally getting people more and more dependent upon this system of control. And now they intend to use that as leverage and force you to accept anything that the social engineers want. It started with a two week lockdown to flatten the curve, okay? Here we are six months later with no end in sight. And uh, they're already rolling out the digital IDs, which will eventually include your medical records, your financial records uh, and payments, your credit, your uh, every aspect of your life essentially uh, will be included on this this biometric digital ID, your vaccine status, uh, everything. They, they're going to want to ensure your compliance. That way you can work, travel, buy, sell, participate in society, even on a basic level. And we're seeing this take place right now in Africa. For example, the Gates Foundation and Gavi, the Global Vaccine Alliance, which got its seed money from the Gates Foundation, is partnering up with MasterCard, and they're rolling out the Trust Stamp combining a vaccine and digital biometric ID. This rolls right into ID 2020 and ID 4D and the United Nations and the Gates Foundations. I mean, this is a major uh, operation that goes into the uh, sustainable development goals I've covered many times before. Um, look back at those recent reports. Uh, this is exactly like the Smart Mark episode that I did recently. Uh, now, in Michigan, a college will digitally track students' locations and medical records at all times to ensure compliance, okay? This is not about a virus. This is about control. This is about ensuring compliance. Now, in New York, right now, they are setting up checkpoints, and they have several mandatory vaccine-related bills in session that are uh, right now. In my state of Arizona, the emergency order includes a provision for forced isolation, forced quarantine, and mandatory vaccination. That will be enforced, you know, they say uh, all of the, the measures will be enforced by law enforcement at the governor's discretion, at his orders. Will they enforce this? Well, I don't know. They're certainly testing the waters for it right now. And there are countless examples around the world, across the country, that all point to the same end game. And uh, like Bill Gates said, they, they believe that you don't have a choice. But you don't have a choice. People act like you have a choice. People don't feel like going to the stadium uh, when they might get infected. You know, it, it's not the government who's saying, okay, just ignore this disease. And, you know, people are deeply affected by seeing these deaths, by knowing they could be part of the transmission chain and you know, old people, uh, their parents, their grandparents could be affected by this. And so you don't, you know, you don't get to say, uh, ignore uh, what's going on here. There, are, there will be the ability, particularly in rich countries, to open up if things are done well over the next few months. But for the world at large, normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population. Then there are politicians like Raf Sikone who is a federal labor senator in Victoria, Australia. He wrote an op-ed and said, quote, to anti-vaxxers, I have one message. Our tolerance for your willful ignorance is over. We cannot afford morally or economically to give up any ground to those who choose not to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Look, many of you out there may be looking forward to this COVID vaccine, and that's fine. That's your choice, or at least it should be, right? But for the people out there who may have reservations or concerns about this rushed experimental vaccine, its efficacy and safety, make no mistake, you may be presented with what will possibly be the most difficult decision of your life very soon. Will you submit under what equates to, in my opinion, coercion, blackmail, and or ransom uh, to accept this vaccine for you and your family uh, so your children can go to school, so you can go to work, so you can buy groceries? Uh, are you willing to face potential fines or jail time uh, You know, if you refuse to take this vaccine? And if they throw you in jail, uh, who knows? They might just strap you down and, and, and put the needle in your arm anyways. You know, will you refuse this? I don't know. I'm, I, I know where I stand on this issue. And this is a big decision that we may face very soon. Bill Gates already said that uh, people need to be vaccinated multiple times. This isn't going to be just like a one time and done thing. You think they're just going to mandate it? You get one shot and that's it? No. If you submit to this, this is never going to end. And who knows what will be next? Um, you know, for example, 
Our records indicate you didn't get your third booster shot this month. Your payments and uh, have been suspended until you update your vaccine records. You know, I mean, imagine how far this could go. All due to a virus with a 99% plus survival rate? I'm not buying it and I'm not taking it. Personally, I have zero doubt in my mind that this crisis was manufactured to facilitate and usher in a new system of control, the likes of which will not only enslave humanity forever, but will fundamentally change what it means to be human. Resist COVID-1984 like your life depends on it because there's a good chance that it does. Regardless of the consequences, I know where I stand. I know my position. Stay tuned for more. I'm Spiro. Be sure to follow me on BitChute because it's videos like this one that promote the idea of individualism and non-compliance that will get this.